Hi guys, and welcome to this Model Engineers Workshop. Today in the workshop, you've got teacups, coffee cups, espresso cups, and today we'll be making oil cups. Hi guys, I'm the chef. So today we're going to be making the oil cups and the caps for them. Oil cups, of course, are part of the lubrication system of the locomotive. There'll be two. Couldn't script that on motorcycle going up the road, could you? There'll be two um, on the inside, on the oil pump, on the water pump, and somewhere else, I believe. And there's another eight for the valve gear and the motion. So we need eight mil rod, brass rod, which I've got here. We're going to be putting this into the collet chuck, give it a quick clean up with a bit of uh, Scotch Brite. We're going to be turning down a little bit, about six mil at the end, once we've cleaned off the end to get rid of that burr. Uh, and then that'll be turned down and that will be threaded M5 using the die in the tailstock holder. We're then going to be coming down 20 mil, 20 and a bit, part that off, making 10 of those. And then when we've got 10 of those, we'll flip them around, put them back in the collet chuck. We're then going to be drilling 40, down 14 mil. We have the 5.2 drill, so we can tap M6. And then we're going to drill that last little bit out with, 330, with a 332nd drill. Wonderful. Good job I have a, uh, an imperial set of drills now. And once that's still through and we've done all 10, then we have a little piece of uh, brass tube, which uh, hopefully will be a press fit. If not, it can be, so can be soft soldered, ordinary household solder into place and that tube will then have a wick going through it so that the oil cup itself once full will then the wick will draw the oil through to the motion um, by capillary action all right guys i'm going to get set up in the lathe and uh, get the cameras running over there and i'll bring you back okay guys back in a tip right oh guys so got the rod in the lathe just face that off i'm just going to clean that up a little bit first then it's a case of turning down about the first 10 mil down to 4.8 so we can thread that 5 mil. Then uh, I'm going to put in a little thread relief at the back of that. I'm going to turn away or part off just a little bit to get that down to the right length. So I'm going to thread about 10 and I'm going to turn it down so that the total length from the shoulder to the end is 6. The reason I'm doing that is that normally I find that the first couple of threads are desperately great because, of course, the die has to find its bite onto the material once that's all that's been shortened down correctly and the thread relief is in we then go down further from the shoulder another 15 mil and we part that off that'll give us one embryo uh, oil cup and then i need to repeat that another nine times after that so i'll show you the first one uh then i'll go off camera make the other nine and i'll bring you back lay this set on 1200 rpm seems to be a favorite of mine i know but never mind so we'll get the lathe going, just polish that up a little bit and uh, get a little bit of emery paper, very smooth old bit and uh, then a bit of Scotch Bright just to make it bright and shiny. Here goes. <laughs> Just touching off. That's about ten mil down. Right, 
Time for a measure. Just try and find my ver verniers. Where did they, where'd they go? Verniers, verniers, verniers. I'd swear sometimes there was a ghost in this workshop. Put something down. Oh, there they are. And the uh, bloody things move. Right, let's have a quick measure up. We're looking for 4.8, 4.75, something like that. We're at 4 points. Seven five. That will do us nicely. Right. So let's just get rid of the tool at the moment. Line the compound out, and I'm going to put a good chamfer on the end of here, just to make life a little bit easier on the die when it starts. So let's do that now. Again, as always, file with a handle on it. Can't say that enough. That you saw, I also put a little, took that little rough edge off here. I'm just going to drop the gears out of the lathe. I'm going to turn the lathe off. The last thing you need is for somehow some freak of mechanics or whatever, electronics, electrics, is for the lathe to suddenly spring into life. So, winding this up, we're making contact. Yeah, the tailstock's moving back. I'm going to lock the tailstock down and turning both. The chuck and the tailstock at the same time until such time as we hit. Yep, there we go. We're starting to bite. Right, the feel of things, just move that up a bit. Yep. Yes, here we go. Right, now we're gonna move the, the top slide in a little bit. Just to give it something to handle to rest on. And we should be starting to bite. Yep, that's moving. At least I think it is. Yep, M5, of course, is a relatively fine thread so you don't really move it that much per turn just wind that back a bit just to clear the chips and we are definitely moving now go with it crack it back one two three and we can hear it rasp has a lovely habit of squeaking As, do, as does bronze. Just pulling this round by hand. There must be a automatic one as well, I'm sure. Somewhere in the world, something you could put in a tailstock and it would automatic. Ah, that's it. Did you hear that? It went clunk. Right, so let's unlock the tailstock, wind the shaft back, wind the compound out, so I've got room to work, and we're just going to wind this back, nice and easy. There we go. And then we'll take a look, see what kind of thread we've got. Should be, should be good and clear, crisp. As I say, we're going to just turn away that and get it all to the right length. And I'll put the thread relief in so that the oil cups will sit right down onto the valve gear when I get that far. But I'm just doing this at the moment just because I've got the lathe covered in brass chips rather than clean the lathe too often. Let's just keep working with brass for the minute. And we're working on the axle pump anyway, so I think you can see by now we have a nice crisp looking thread there. Again, you know, there's a couple of knackered threads at the end there. So what we're going to do, put a little parting tool on, a little, and we'll wind that into place. Let's 
make sure we get the knife back in the gear. There we go. And we're going to get this into there. We set the dial to zero just so we have a starting point. So I'm going to just take away that little sharp corner in there, put a thread relief in, then I'm going to back out six mil, which on this lathe is two full turns on the dial and 46 divisions. And then I'm going to part off that little bit there. Actually, I'm going to drop the speed down. It will go ping, otherwise it will fly all over the place. Right, so what did I say? Two division, two full turns, six mil, two full turns, 46 divisions. Right, here we go, guys. We'll get this thread relief in and part the end off and get it nice and clean. I'll run a little, I'll run the file over that. Then I'm going to go back to my zero here, move the tool down um, 16 and a half because the, the parting tool is a mil and a half wide. And uh, Part off and we'll have one embryo um, oil cup made. Here we go. Aha! It helps you turn the lathe on. There we go. Click. Let's just do a numb nut check to make sure we've got that number looking right. I need six mil when all done. And that looks about right to me. Okay, here we go. I'll just part this little end piece off. There we go. Go back to my zero. Which is there. 16 and a half mil is 6 turns 38 plus 25, 58. 58, let's say 65. Gives it a clean up. 6 and 65. Right, so. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 65 divisions. Hope you can hear me, otherwise I'm talking to myself. And I'll just put this into the power cutoff, the power feed on the top slide, and I'll catch this as it drops off. Here we go. Right, there we go, guys. One little Ambro oil cup, little thread relief in there so that it'll sit right down tight. Uh, nice clean thread, cleaned off there. Nice and easy. A little bit of a tip here that I'm going to have to turn off, but I've got another nine of these to make. So this video is right, this part of the video is running at 12 minutes. So I've got another, at least another 90 minutes. So I'll stop the video here and I'll bring you back when I'm done. Once I've got all 10 embryos made. Okay, guys, see you in an hour and a half. See you in an hour and a half at least. Bye now. Right, guys, so there we go. Made all the little oil cup blanks. There's nine here. I've got one set up in the collet check. Collet chuck as the remains of the bar I used to make them from. So what's the order of operations going to be? Well, actually, let's just start off here. You can see nice little thread relief. That's 15 mil long. So the order of operations is just to turn that little tip off there. Uh, we're going to centre drill, we're going to go in with a 5.2mm mm, 5 mm drill, so tapping M6. Go down to the very tip of drill, it's 14mm, so it's going to just fall short to the very bottom. I'm drifting, sorry guys. And then that last little bit, so from a millimetre at the bottom here all the way through, yep, is going to be 332nd because we then have to, whether this tube will be a press fit or whether it will actually need a little bit of solder in there, just a little bit of household solder. This then goes in to about that far, so you can imagine it's going to go in like that. Then I'm going to have to put a little bit of a wick in it, and uh, 
And uh, if it's a press fit, that's great. If it's not, it's just a little bit of household solder, solder warm a lump with a blowtorch, touch it with the old solder just enough to lock it down. And then use the Dremel or something like that just to clean this, the next bit, the, the remainder of the pipe off. And then just ditto, repeato 10 times. Right. Come on. Focus. Thank you. Right. So nine here on the bench. Number 10's in the chuck already ready, waiting to go. So I'll stop it here and I'll move over there and I'll bring you back when I'm ready to show you. All right. Back in a tick. Right, guys. So first embryo's in the collet chuck. Little tit to turn off first. Then it's the center drill, 5.2 mil, 3.30 second all the way through. The 5.2 goes down to a little piece of tape that I've marked up, put on the uh, drill itself, just to give me a, a marker. Once we've done the 3.30 second all the way through, then we'll change those all out, put the M6 tap in, run the machine very slowly, and uh, tap into the right depth, reverse that out, and this, and this embryo is done. So I'm going to just record this basically on the, uh, Full time. Just make sure both cameras are running. Sure looks like it. Okay, here we go, guys. The LED is on 1200 RPM, being well. Ah. Ah, come on. There we go. That's it. 1200 RPM. Here we go. go so i'll just take that pin chuck out as, as it probably worked out my chuck on the lathe doesn't go down that small can't hold a 330 second drill so i had to hold it in a pin little pin vise and uh, make do with what i've got and then i can see my little blue line as i say i've got a little little blue line on the tap now so i'm going to set the machine to go to 65 rpm there we go and we'll run this in and once i hit the blue line i turn it off like this is the lathe about oh, i don't know maybe a couple of turns still to go so i've taken that all into account and uh, the last thing you want to do is bottom and tap out like this because you'll just probably well it might spin and chuck it or not you'll just snap it off okay here goes the tapping okay I think we might have just reached the bottom of that. Let me just reverse that out and see what happens. I don't think I had it very tight in the chuck, so we'll have another go at that. Oh yeah, definitely not very tight. Right. Just go careful at this now, just to make sure that the, we don't cross thread it. Where's my blue line gone? Hang on guys, just got to reset, just got to find my blue line.
There it is, I can see it now. Right. There we go. There we go, we're biting. Blue line, there we go, and then reverse him out. Alright, let's get that out and have a look at it, see what we've got. So, there we go, hole all the way through. Nice looking thread on the inside. Yep, there you can see the light reflecting off it. Right, so we've still got to make the caps for those, so I've got another nine of these to go, and then I've got eight little knurled caps to make and two little special ones which we need to Okay guys, so got all the 10 embryos done. As you can see, tell you what, let me just see if I can zoom you in. There we go. Right, so you can see they're all threaded. They've all got the holes through for the pipe, which is over there. This is 332nd pipe. As you can see, they're quite a loose fit. So I'm gonna have to solder those in so my thought is, there we go. So I'll put a little mark on here so I know how far they've got to go in there. I only go about halfway up. Then uh, get this bit tinned with a bit of household solder and then just go to my mark and then just warm the whole lot up and it'll all just flow together. So you can, you know, if I can get this to focus, you'll be able to see. Yep, there we go. There'll be a tube down about that far with a bit of a wick in it. Uh, and that will then go down through that pipe and just let the oil by a capillary action run through to wherever it needs to be. So I've got to make eight now little caps, little kind of thumb knurled caps that go into the top of these eight. These two get uh, a different kind of cap because these then have the bit of hexion, which is here. Uh, turn down a thread, of course, which goes onto there. Put the recess in it, make sure it's the right length gets a hole going into it, but not all the way through, because then when that's screwed into here, it then has a pipe that goes in for a silicon pipe to connect to a little oil pot on the side of the frames. Uh, I'll make the two now while I'm busy doing the caps, and we'll drill that hole in the side once we know that this is screwed into the right place, which one ever it turns out to be, or you know, whatever. And uh, we'll pick the side, the hexagon side that's pointing in the right direction, and we'll drill the hole in that. Because if I drill it, the hole in it now and get the pipe in, it's guaranteed to go in the wrong direction. I know I could use some little thin copper uh, shim washers, which are oops, readily available on uh, the internet through model engineer supplies and whoever they, that may be. And uh, you can use the shim to adjust how far down that cap will screw to get the pipe pointing in the right direction. But for the sake of waiting till we get the, oil, the water pump, axle water pump finished, it's just worth waiting. So two out of this, which is hexagon, there we go. And eight out of this, this is 9.6 mil, three eighths. 10 mil would be close enough, but eight, you know, this will make a cap that is just gonna be proud of this, because of course this is eight mil, this is 9.6. So it will give the fingers something to grab onto. Right guys, I'm gonna get set up in the lathe now. Get this, I've got to uh, get this into the next collet up, change the collet and then We'll make the caps, and then once we've got the caps made, I'll explain what this is. Right, let me get set up, and I'll be back. Right, I guess. So now we've got the 10 little oil pots themselves made. We now need 10 caps. Uh, the design calls for eight of one kind and two of a different one. So this is me going to be making the first of the eight, and then I'll go off camera and make the other eight, and I'll show you when they're all done. Um, yep, so what have we got to do? We've got to, I've already... Uh, faced off and cleaned off the muck. Uh, we're going to turn down 10 to about 5.7, 5.75 mil. That then gets threaded M6. We then go into uh, put in the thread relief at the back, part that thread off to length, put a chamfer on the end, put a chamfer on the corner. We then go into knurl with a little thumb wheel kind of part of the cap at the top. We're then going to drill 
with a center drill into the bottom here just to form a relief. And then we're going to go uh, part this off at the right length. So the total length of the thing is actually only about nine millimeters all up. You've got six millimeters from the end to, with the thread and the thread relief, and then the thick actual thumb wheel at the top is three mil itself. Uh, this is going to be pretty much real time. The only, I might just uh, zip a bit out once I'm changing over from the tailstock die holder to the drill chuck, but we'll see how we go. If it gets too long, I'll zip that bit out. I'm just making sure everything's free and easy. The lathe is set on 1200 RPM. Here we go. Going by the dials on the lathe, that should be very close to what we're looking for. 5.75, that will do it nicely. Yep, <laughs> just check that on the camera, it's actually quite useful. So we've got five just under six, so we go along and yep, 5.75. Yep, that'll do it. Right, so now we're going to put a chamfer on. Just put the tool away. I'll put a good chamfer on this end so the thread's got something to start on and just tidy this up because that's quite raggedy and sharp. and smooth got a good decent chamfer on the end of there just so that the die has something to actually start onto winding the tool post up so it's got something for the die tail stock die stock to work against because thread, threading brass is fairly tough i'm hoping on one of these one of these will be able to see on the camera i'm not sure i think most of the things will be in the way right so what's going to happen now is i'm going to grab i'm grabbing the chuck i'm just going to take it out of gear there we go Oops, not quite, a little too far. That's better, so it's free running. So as I turn this this way, of course, I'm going to be winding the tailstock so to drive the die holder that way, just till it starts to squeak. You don't want to be going too far, otherwise you're just going to push the threads right off it. I've got the tailstock locked down nice and tight, feeling resistance on the tailstock as I'm turning the handle to move the die up. So here goes. So pull with the left, push with the right, There we go. You can hear it squeaking. So what I'm going to do now is wind the tailstock back a little bit just to give it some free room. And now we only turn the chuck kind of three one way. Wind it back. Clear the chips in the in the dice. Just as a, just the same as if you're doing it on the bench. Break the break the chips. Hopefully you'll be able to see that the that the die holder is actually moving forwards. I know I can. Let's just find that one. Get that one back. And we'll go all the way up to the shoulder. a bit stiff so I'll just clear those chips. There we go, that'll do it. Another couple of turns and we'll be there. There we are, the lathe will tell me when I'm stopped. So the tailstock is wound back, drop the clamp, 
Now it's literally just a case of winding backwards now. Sorry for the hand, just till this gets a bit looser. Yep, there we go. Yes, I probably could do this under power, but nah. Right, this is getting nice and free now. I'm just going to put a little bit of a little bit of a pull onto the die stock, the die tail stock holder, just so that it works itself back. And when it comes free, it'll just slide back. There it goes, and that's that out the way. Right, so have a quick look at that. Nice looking thread. Yep, that will do us. Right, so uh, let's have a think. I need to nail this, then I can put in the thread relief, cut this to length, and drill a countersink, uh, center drill in the middle, in the bottom end here, and then we'll part it off. So the parting tool gets used three times, but it's all one after the other. So, get the nailing tool on. There we go. Come on. Right, close. There we are. Make sure it goes all the way down. Lock the tool post. Wind it into the right place. That's about there. Looks good. Right, so wind this in just a little bit. That'll do. Get the lathe set on to the lowest revolutions, 65 RPM. Brush in the hand so I can just bat away at the uh, knurling wheels and clean them up as they go around because they will fill and if they fill, they choke and if they choke, you get no knurl. Right, let's have the power on and we'll you'll see this moving. This will be going around from the beginning then the bottom one will catch up and we'll make a knurl. There's contact with the bottom wheel, I can feel it. Just winding in the top side, just a little bit at a time. I'm looking over the top of the wheels just so I can see the knurl that's being formed. There we go. That looks about right. Wind out. Give that a bit of a clean as the lathe slows down. There's a nice looking little knurl on there, nice and sharp, so that'll be all right. right. Take my knurling tool out, hang that back up. This is where I might just stop the video for a little while. I've just got to take the reducing sleeve off the tailstock die holder. Actually, stay still. You'll hear me do it. Here we go. Whack it with a hammer. There we go. Tailstock die, ho die holder goes back in its place. Drill chuck goes into the sleeve. Drill chuck now goes into the tailstock. There we go. Want the tail stock down, back into A2, which is 1200 RPM. That's it there. There we go. Right. All nice and free. Nope, got that wrong. Let's do That's too long at the moment. That's why it's wrong. So let's set this up. I'm going to take the tool in and cut the relief. By doing that, I'm going to set my zero. In there, so I know how far I'm coming back. Let's get this that, the compound onto zero. There we go. Look at that. Here we go.
Right, there we go. One little oil cup cap, a little bit of a tit on it there. So we have another operation to do with all of these when I get them made. I've got another seven to go, I need eight in total. So what that will involve is making a little threaded bush to go into the chuck, then that gets threaded in, this will get cleaned off, and then we need to put a little center in the end here and drill through 1.6 mil just to make, make a little air hole so these uh, uh, oil pots can breathe. Right guys, I've got seven more of these to go and uh, yep, I'll bring you back when I've got them done. Okay, see you in a bit guys. Right guys, so got eight caps made. Now i just got to make the last two to make the total 10 to match the number of uh, oil pots. This is the hex stock, going to go in about eight, turn that down to 5.75, put a thread on it, uh, M6, going to drill in after that to go to a depth of about 12 mil and once that's drilled and threaded, we'll put in the thread relief, we'll part off the crappy threads at the end, put a little bit of a chamfer on the end of the thread, and then it's just a case of parting this off to a total length of 14 mil. So uh, I'll be recording this at normal speed. If it gets a bit long, then uh, I'll uh, probably cut, edit a couple of bits out and make it a little bit shorter for you. Machine's on 1200, the lathe is turned on, makes a change. Chucker is, is running free, so there's nothing banging on it. So here goes. <laughs> Let's just see where we're at. I'll just grab the verniers. Let's wind that back out. There we go. Let's have a look. There we go. We're at five. Let's have a look on here, shall we? You can see we're there on under six anyway, which is good. And we're looking at 5.75. That should do us. Right. Let me just... Bang out the tool out of the way. That away from here. So I'm not going to snag myself on it. Just take out my drill chuck, out my tail stock. Get, I need the sleeve, so hammer that out. There we go. Put the reducing sleeve onto the tailstock die holder that's in the tailstock now and you can just disengage the lathe a little bit everybody's moved up let's move this up to give me something to work against now as we've done before we're going to let that handle rest against there 
and we're going to get this threaded M6. So put the tailstock down, turn the chuck this way, turn the tailstock handle the other way so it actually pushes those two together. And then when we hear it squeaking, we know we're biting. Kind of equal turns. Ah, there we go. Right. Wind the tailstock back a little bit, give it some room. No, nope, I don't think we're biting. Okay. Yeah, we are now. There we go. Nice and easy. Wind it back a bit. Just clear the chips. close there we go won't go anymore so we're where we need to be just loosen the tail stock off now and wind that off there we go gets easier as we go just a little bit of light pulling on the tail stock die holder body and then it pulls free there we go that's a nice looking thread. A little bit of cleaning up to do once we get that off. Right, now we go again. Take have to get that sleeve off. I really should order another one so I can change back to the drill chuck. I already have a center in. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to center, we're going to no, we're not actually going to part that off first. So, because I need to, otherwise my hole won't be deep enough because I will have parted some of it away. Right, let's get the zero set. Which is going to be there. I'll just set the, just reset the dials on the compound. That looks about right. We're going to go in and then we've got to come back five. So, We'll just clear that and away we go. Ah! I took the lay that again, didn't I, to do the tapping? There we go. Here we go.
Right, there we go guys. That's one cap done, just one more to go. This will then get mounted back in the lathe and we'll turn that little tit off it and we'll just put a little bit of a chamfer on those sharp edges just to make it look pretty. This just needs a little run with a file. This bottom edge doesn't need to be rounded off like a nut because this is going to go down flat onto the uh, oil cup body. Right, let me just reset the lathe and I'll get back to you. Right guys, so I've just cleared the deck a little bit. So let me explain this. This is what's called a split bushing. As you can see, it's a piece of brass. I've turned that down to fit in the chuck through your chuck. I've left a nice big fat collar so it'll sit up against the chuck yours this way. I've turned it sufficiently down so that when this is screwed into it, I've got room to work. Let's see if I can do this. I'm looking at the camera. There we go. Doesn't need to go all the way down. And then you can see that it's got three saw cuts in it. All right. Now this one goes all the way through to the main bore. These two go down to this diameter, this one here. And let me just see if I can find it. Yes, there it is. This little center pop is in line with the center of what I refer to as jaw number one on the three jaw chuck. If this was going in a four jaw chuck or a self-centering four jaw chuck even, I'd, I'd have four cuts. So they're one in between every jaw. This lines up with that. You put that little whatever piece, this is for M6, uh, this particular split bush. Put that in the chuck. You line that center pop up there with the center of jaw one. And as you tighten the jaw down, the jaws down on the three jaw, this whole thing clamps down so that this will not rotate. It's only a, maybe a thou or two thou compress compression, but as long as everything's gone right, it's going to stay put. Now, of course, I'm going to put this into the uh, three jaw chuck now, turn that off, put a little center pop in, center drill into the end and then drill through 1.6 mil for a air hole. So that's an explanation, very quick admittedly, of what a split bush is. Very useful, especially if you've got to machine two ends of the same piece, one end of which is threaded, because you don't want to be putting that into the jaws of the three jaw, you're just going to crush them. doesn't matter whether it's steel or brass, it only takes one little mistake and you've got a part to make over. Right guys, I'm off to the lathe, get this in and we'll pick it up when I get there. So set up again now, here's the little split bushing that I just explained about, I've screwed in the first of the uh, Special caps that one of the two. I'm just going to turn that little tit off there and I'm going to change the tool. Just swing the tool post around slightly so that I can use a tool and just take those sharp corners off. Just to make it look like the top end of a nut. Uh, when I've done that, swap it for the other one, do that, and these two are done. Then I'll start showing you what we've got to do with the uh, other eight. I just need a bit of a clean up again, a little bit of a tit on there. And then we need to drill a very small hole through just to let some air in and out. All right, guys, so we're still engaged. Here we go. Let's get this done. This I've screwed the embryo uh, cap. I've screwed in as far as I can with my fingers. I've tightened the chuck down so it shouldn't go any further. There's a very small chance it might, with the, re the uh, repetitive knocks of going around and taking the corners off, it might just move back in a little bit, but that's no problem. I'll be able to undo it later on when, if it gets too tight. Okay, here goes. <laughs> Take that tool off, put this tool on, tighten that up, loosen the tool post, just take that over a little bit like that, make sure we're not going to interfere with the chuck as it goes around, but I will just line that in just to make sure, no, nope, we're clear, right, here goes. Let me just have a little look at that. That'll do us. A little bit big maybe, a bit of work with a file just to take off any sharp edges, but it's taken that really sharp corner off the top. Right, okay, got to get number two done. Let's just see, do we? Now, of course it's tightened up in the chuck. Right, I'll loosen that all off, get that out, get the next one done, and I'll uh, bring you back when it's time to do the uh, ordinary caps, the other eight, hang on. Okay, so here we're now, changed to the first of the eight caps that I've got to just uh, trim up and drill through. So we'll do the same as before. 
We'll just take that little tit off and we'll put a very small center drill, about a 1.6 millimeter drill here and a pin chuck, which I'll then put in the, in the drill chuck straight through till we hit the hole in the bottom of the uh, cap itself. And that one's done. I'll do one and then I'll bring you back at the end when they're all put together. Okay, here goes. There we go guys, that's all there is to that operation. Seven more to do. And this has turned out to be a bit of a longer video than I expected it to be. But uh, I'll bring you back when I'm on the bench again. I think that unscrews now it's out the, out the three jaw, nice and easy. There we go. Right, seven more to go. Back soon. There we go guys. Longer job than it always seems to, you always seem to think it would take. Two with special caps, eight with little thumb screw wheels which are nice and tight in there. There we go. But that will stop, stop me losing them when the loco is running. Nice little bit of knurling on there. There we go. Right, so, uh, yeah, long job. Longer than I thought it would, but I think that seems to be par for the course. And, uh, yeah, give us a tip. Righto, guys, that's the job done. Little handful of 10 parts. Well, it's actually 20, eight, ca 10 caps and 10 bodies. Longer job than I thought. I've said that a couple of times already. Sorry for repeating myself. Right. Uh, longer video. Hopefully you've got to the end of it. It's quite interesting. Lots of turning in this one. Um, but I'll call it quits there. Right, guys. I'll do like I normally do. If you can find it in your heart and soul to give me a like, a subscribe, and maybe even hit that bell to get the notifications when the videos come out, 12 o'clock every Sunday, South Australian time. Your support would be greatly appreciated. Even if you're a watcher, please, please think about subscribing. If you're a subscriber, absolutely top. Thanks a lot. Righto, guys. This is the Chef signing up, and we'll see you the next time.